So I'm gonna show you guys a knot that's really common one that people use that I would not recommend using. Uh, people call it a quick release knot, but it's only a quick release knot if your horse doesn't pull on it. If they pull on it, you're not gonna get them undone. So let me show you how people do this. And this is what not to do. So you're gonna wrap the tail of your rope around. Uh, you make a fold and you come around here and put it through. So people think that this is a quick release knot because you have the tail of the rope here and you could just come and pull this undone. But the problem with this knot is it's only a two bite knot and if a horse pulled back really hard, um, you wouldn't be getting this undone. You'd be cutting your rope off. So don't do that knot. So one of my favorite ways to use, to introduce a horse to being tied, like a young horse or a green horse that doesn't have experience with it, is these blocker ties. Um, they're a very safe way um, to do this. So the way you want this facing is you want the, the back side of this facing away from you. And then you also want your carabiner clipped facing away from you. Because there is a risk of a horse playing with this and getting their lip, um, lip stuck in it. And so you want to set it up like that. Then what you want to do is you want to fold your lead rope in half and uh, bend that out. And you're just going to put the end of it in there and have that come down. Now you can see that this puts a little bit of resistance there. Not a lot, but just enough that if you have a long enough lead rope, that horse is probably still going to be tied when you get back. So great way to tie a horse up. All right, so we're going to be showing you guys how to wrap a horse on the rail. This is one of the safest ways to tie a horse up. Um, so here we use this for just temporary, like you're going to tie them up and go get a bridle or you're going to move something in the arena or just they're, they're waiting here for a few minutes to be unsaddled, something like that, kind of temporary because the horse could feasibly get themselves undone and uh, walk away. But this is a nice safe way, you know, that we're on a busy road with lots of things going on and I don't want to tie my horse solid to this because at any minute something that I haven't prepared them for could scare them and they pull back. And, um, you know, it's like most of my horses, if not all my horses, could handle being tied solid and there's a 99.9% .9 chance nothing would happen. But I put a lot of money and effort and time into these horses and um, I would just hate to risk them hurting themselves by me just being stubborn and thinking I have to tie them hard to the rail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap on the rail. And um, one of the important notes about this is I'm gonna go under the rail first. Um, so sometimes to get people to remember that, I say under, thinking underpants. <laughs> and uh, that just kind of helps you remember it. So you go under. Every wrap I make makes what's called a bite. And so depending on the rail, so if I just did two bites here, let's just test it here. Let's just see. So you can see with just two fingers on that rope, I could pull it out. So the likelihood of this horse being here by the time I come back 10 minutes later is not very likely with two wraps. So I'm going to need to take another wrap. And uh, so let's just test what three wraps would give us. And anytime you wrap a horse to any rail, you need to test the rope and pull on it to see what the, the resistance is. Now that was just perfect. If I pull pretty hard, I don't know, that might be 100 pounds of pressure or something, it'll, it'll give. Um, so the horse is going to feel like they're tied solid. Okay, they're going to feel like that. But if they did pull back, it would give. Now that's with this rope and this rail. If this rail was a little rougher, it's painted, and so it's a little bit smoother than a bare metal rail would be. And uh, this rope is clean, it's not wet. If it was wet, it would be a lot stickier. So there's a couple factors that you gotta keep in mind when you're wrapping a horse on a rail. Um, now let's just test what would happen if I did four wraps. So if I did four wraps on here, you can see I can just barely get it to move, but me pulling as hard as I can, I don't know how hard I can pull, but reasonably hard. And uh, I can't really get it to move. So basically she's tied solid at this point, okay? And so I don't wanna do that. So with the rail here, I would tie her with just three wraps, just like that. So let's say you decided on this rail, you wanted to uh, tie a horse solid to it, but you didn't want the rope to be able to slide up and down, right? So like a lot, of, if I tied a knot like this, okay, so she's tied solid, but she could wander over here and this rope could slide off the end of the hitching rail or something like that. So let's say I wanted her to stay in her position so she didn't argue with another horse or something like that. Um, what I would do is I would make a couple of wraps on the post, okay? Then I would go ahead and tie my horse with the same knot. This is called a Stockman's Bowen. This also works well if you gotta tie them to something high that you need the rope to come down and tie the knot in front of you, not up where the pivot point is. So I take the back of the rope closest to the horse and I lay it over the front. This just puts a little loop in here. It's called a half hitch. Then you take the tail of the rope and you set it 
over the half hitch, and then you make one wrap, trying to not put your fingers in the loop here, because if the horse pulled back while you're doing this, uh, you'd be in trouble there. So once I'm here, so I've made my wrap around, now I'm gonna let go of that part, and I'm gonna grab my tail, and I'm gonna come under and over. And when I do that, I make a little fold in the rope. I call that a key. So then uh, I take the key, and this is called the lock. You put the key in the lock. And then you just pull it snug, and you're good to go. It's called the Stockman's Mullen. It's a three bite knot. So even if there was a lot of pressure on this, you could still get it undone. Now you can see that this horse um, could work their way back and forth, and it, the rope is going to bind on the rail here so they couldn't slide it around. So a uh, very, very good way to, to tie a horse up again to something high or something you don't want them to slide back and forth on. Um, one last thing I just want to add to this is let's say. Um, well, I see a lot of people doing this. They tie their horse and they have so much slack that that horse can eat. And everything's hunky-dory while that horse is eating. But if that foot horse were to paw and put that foot over the rope, they could be in all sorts of trouble where they might um, hurt themselves. And so I don't like seeing horses tied um, low with a long lead rope. I don't mind tying them high. Um, high is better for horses. Um, and so on this short of a hitching rail, I would probably be pretty inclined to have the rope about that long. Um, and that's where I would, I would tie them up at. All right, I hope, I hope these tips help you keep your horse safe while being tied and uh, go out and give it a try.